come before you. We join our hearts. We invite your presence, your grace, as we gather around this space. And God, we first acknowledge we who are in the Pasadena area that we are on dwelling on unceded land of the Tongva tribe of the LA Basin and our sisters and brothers up north in the Santa Barbara County area on the unceded land of the Chumash. God, we collectively pause and we honor their ancestors, elders, posterity. And we reject the notion of property. And God, we declare that these lands are under their stewardship. And we pray, God, that even as you're moving this, as the two videos, uh, God gracefully reminded us all globally by your spirit, your love, your energy, your movement, how you're moving people. God, we pray also that reparation, right, just reparation as a first step will be made to every indigenous tribe on this continent and around the globe. And God, we pray in your mercy that this country called the United States of America will reckon with its past, oh God. We know that from the mouths of prophets that God, nothing can move on unscathed due to God, sins, abuse of power that has taken place. And so, God, we ask for your mercy that this country will reckon with its past of stolen lands, genocide, bloodshed, lynchings, exploitation of black and brown bodies. Oh, God, sexism and every isms, God, that is under the sun and white supremacy, nationalism will be demolished. And that every horn of the rich, powerful, arrogant, high-minded, liar, falsifier, conspirator, bigot, hypocrites, oh God, abusers of power, of God, manipulator, exploiters of humanity, oh God, be cut down and be like chaff before the wind. And that God, you will raise every valley. You will level every mountain and that God, the most marginalized amongst us, God and the made invisible will be centralized and made visible and their voices heard. Every God that every war instruments will be hammered into farming tools and that love will prevail. Love will prevail. And even as we say, God, your kingdom come, your will be done. May we discern our place, God, each and every day, right here and right now, how we can contribute and how we can live out the fulfillment of that prayer. God, have mercy. Strengthen the weak. God, comfort the outcasts and the forgotten. God, empower the movements around God, this world that are, that are ushering in justice and righteousness and humanity, God, whether it be in Iran, Central South America, whether it be in East Asia, Southeast Asia, places like Myanmar that tends to be overlooked, African nations, oh God, Sudan, uh, Ethiopia, oh God. And so many places where the cries are rising before you. God, may you pour out your mercy today. And even as we have gathered together today, God, we bring ourselves before you. And may it be an offering that is acceptable to you. We collectively lift up the lives of all those whom we touch. Even sisters and brothers that are not here with us for various reasons. We bring them up before you. And we look to you, God. May we plug into your grace. 
and the move of your spirit in the midst of us. And we thank you. And in your son, Jesus name, we pray. Amen. Okay, so we have, I think, um, the communal reading next. I think Dr. Dave is doing that. Are you present, David? Yeah, oh. I'm present and I guess I'm unmuted, but I don't yeah. have it in front of me. Oh, okay. I don't see it on the screen. Okay. Go ahead and uh, let's do it. Oh, there we, there we go. All right, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the heartbroken, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. To provide for oh, those who mourn, mourn, in, mourn Zion. in Zion, to give, to give them, them a, garland a garland instead of ashes, of ashes. The, oil the oil of gladness, gladness instead, instead of mourning, mourning. the mantle, the mantle of, praise. of praise instead, instead of, a, of faint a faint spirit. spirit. They will, they be, will called be called oaks, oaks of, of righteousness, righteousness, the planting, planting of, the Lord of the Lord to, to display, display his glory. His glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love, love justice. justice. I, I hate, hate robbery, robbery and, and wrongdoing. wrongdoing. I will faithfully, I will faithfully give, them give them their, their recompense. recompense. And, and I will make, make an everlasting covenant with them. With them. Their de descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the people. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. For I, For I, the Lord, Lord of justice. Love justice, I hate, I hate robbery, robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully, faithfully give, give them their recompense, their recompense and I will, I will make, make an, an everlasting, everlasting covenant, covenant with, them. with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord is blessed. I will greatly, greatly rejoice, rejoice in, the in the Lord. My whole, my whole being, being shall exult in my God. My God. For he, has, For he has clothed me, me with, with the, the garments, garments of, salvation. of salvation. He, he has, has covered, covered me with a robe, <coughs> with a robe of, of, righteousness. of righteousness. As, As a bride bridegroom decks, decks himself, himself with, with a garland. garland. And, as, and a bride, as a bride adorns herself with, with jewels. Her jewels.
The spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me up to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to release the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. For as the, the earth, earth brings, brings forth, forth its, its shoots, and, and as a garden, garden causes, causes what is, what is sown, sown in, it in it to spring, to spring up, up, so, so the, the Lord God, God will cause righteousness, righteousness and, praise and praise to spring up, up before, before all, all the nations. nations. All right. Well, Maria is doing our announcements today. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. It's uh, Sunday, December 11th um, on beautiful rainy or almost rainy day. Rain is about to hit Santa Maria this afternoon. So um, today's theme is comfort and the strength to rebuild. And next Sunday, we meet in person, um, and hopefully we'll get to see you. We'll be meeting at 1916 Chapala at 9 a.m. And our Christmas Eve gathering um, is going to be uh, from 4.30 to 5.15. You're invited to join the Wake Collective on that evening, also at 1916 Chapala Street. And we will also be on Zoom for those um, who can't be there in person. As well as um, New Year's Day, we'll meet via Zoom at 10 a.m. instead of 9 a.m. So get a, a full extra hour of, of rest before we meet. <laughs> uh, 2023 promises to be a momentous year for us. Um, if you have not already done so, consider adding to your contributions in the new year um, and uh, or before the, the close of the new year, because that's also wonderful as well. Um, or to uh, you can do that through the ncwc.net website or uh, the Jesus Collective on Venmo. And we get to warmly share communion together at today at the end of today's session. And our quote from today is from Jennifer, Reverend Jennifer Butler. And it says, Advent begs us to notice how God's power shows up most for people in the wilderness, rather than those ensconced in the halls of power. John the Baptist, a voice in the wilderness, is not only preparing the way for the Lord Jesus, but also teaching his followers that all of us pave God's entry by standing with those who weep with no place to call home. Later in the passage, John criticizes religious leaders who have aligned their interests with Rome's brutal empire, rather than with those who have been marginalized by such regimes. And today we get to uh, do some uh, greetings before we uh, get to hear from Pastor Moore uh, and his message for the week. So join a breakout room. Please, thank you. Thank you. 
Hey, welcome back everybody. I've been really looking forward to um, sharing my heart with you today because this is a reminder that people will rise, will rise to the top. People will excel when they remove their oppressions. People will be creative and inventive. And this includes you, you excel, you manifest your, your full identity. And you, when the chance comes, and if no one gives you a chance, may you be a person who presses forward anyway. Well, last Sunday, we read from Isaiah 40, a, a call to comfort one another. That chapter gave us hope that mountains would be mountains would be leveled and and valleys would be lifted, um, mountains lowered, valleys lifted. The the language of mountains and valley there is a metaphor for justice. Justice, but it's not magic. Sometimes it's magical, but not magic. The manifestation of justice comes from our faith along with our action. The Christmas story is a justice story. And it's magical, but it's not magic. Which informs us that our story can be both the product of history and of imagination at the same time. So last Sunday, we read Isaiah 40, but today we read from Isaiah 61, where we see the promise of cosmic change. Um, we, we see that comfort is coming to the oppressed, the brokenhearted, the captives, the prisoners, to comfort all who mourn. And I believe that cosmic change is possible, not just pos possible. I think I think it will happen. We, we have examples of masses, massive surprises, surprises that should not have surprised us, but they did. Many of us were amazed when we saw the end of South Africa's apartheid. And yet over two decades before the end of apartheid in South Africa, Desmond Tutu gave a speech in Soweto, which he closed by saying, we have already won. The hope for change in ge geopolitical conditions does not suggest to me that God's just going to swoop in and poof, there it is. And this much is true for what's going on in, in your life personally. It's not poof and there it is. It's it's going to seem like that, though, to some people who are watching you and watching what happens to you when it happens to you. It will look to them like poof, but it took some doing to get you to this point. It took endurance and character building. It took faith. It took hope. Even when you could feel that you were on the verge of something big, you still needed strength. Where did you find the strength to carry on, strength to rise up, to raise your voice, to step up, to speak up for other folks? Where did you find the strength to keep going, to keep hoping, to almost give up on hope, but then hope again and again? And you know, all you needed was a break. By faith, your chance, your chance is already happening. Humans who struggle to overcome they need a break. They need comfort. Comfort comes with relief from oppression, from pressure. Comfort gives you the strength, the energy to try again. Comfort gives you the strength to rebuild. We read in Isaiah 61 that they shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. What this is saying is that they're going to make things like new. And for you, all you needed was a chance, a chance to show out, a chance to rebuild, new energy to raise up what was devastated and to repair what was ruined. You needed things to be made right in order to do greater things. All you needed was a chance, and you fought for that chance. 
In some cases, it took many generations and you followed through on what your ancestors started. And look at you, you are in the midst of great change. This, policy, this possibility is true not only for you, but listen, I believe it's for, possible for the world. Not only will you find new strength, but the world can find the strength to change. A few days ago, Kenichi sent me this, uh, this link uh, to a New York Times article. Morocco, the title was Morocco Win Brings Cheers Heard Across Africa and the Middle East. And Arabs and Africans around the world joined in an outpouring of pride and joy over Morocco's World Cup success after it defeated Spain, Spain, which many thought would take it all in the World Cup. And then Kenichi sent a note and said, Europe's dominance in the world, Europe's dominance in world football is eroding, as is colonialism. And here we are expecting, believing for greater things. But the faith that we have is revolutionary faith as opposed to colonizer faith. They're very different things. We read in, in Isaiah 61, for I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. This is telling us that whatever level the robbery takes place on, even <laughs> in international ways, that, that God hates that, that, that change is coming. And so even though you may feel sometimes like, like you're not making a difference, maybe you might ask yourself, have, have we outlived our usefulness? Can I stray too far from my path? Can I disidentify with my true self until there's no way back? Do I have a used by date? Well, in the Bible, it was Israel, but this past week, it was Morocco. And let me say that you can be inspired by this. Claim it, acknowledge it. This week, you are Morocco. Think about this. How many matches did Morocco lose over the past almost 70 years uh, at the World Cup? How many times were they overlooked, laughed at? How many times did other teams see them as a pushover, an easy win? And how about you? How many times while you were plugging away, did you go unnoticed? Have you felt like you were forgotten, hurt so deeply that you wondered if you could ever stand to be hurt again? Well, yesterday, Morocco won yet again, becoming the first African country to ever reach the semifinals. And yes, this is soccer, but I think it's also yet another reminder that you cannot hold people down forever. In fact, where you are right now, uh, where you're sitting in that room, would you just articulate that? You cannot keep me down, all right? I mean, say it out loud. You cannot keep me down. And now look at the screen and say it to somebody else. We will not be held down. So, so, so why didn't you quit on yourself? Why didn't you step, step off the bus several stops back? Because you knew in your heart, you were doing the right thing. More accurately, you were doing the you thing. You embraced, you embraced the anointing in your life. And yes, things got hard, but every now and then someone would stop and give you words of comfort and that sustained you for a little while longer. Here's what the Bible tells us. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he, incre he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. How many times did you have to lose? How many times did your parents, your grandparents have to lose? And, and, and if you happen to have children, how many times did they have to watch you lose? Well, this scripture says that the spirit of the Lord God is upon you because he has anointed you. You have been anointed to do, to do what? To heal, to raise up, to restore, to repair, 
to rebuild. And so I pray today for a resurgence of that energy that you need, a resurgence of the strength that you need, that even though you, you, you may feel like just you know, mailing it in, but may you receive new strength by the presence of the living creator in our midst right now. Holy God, thank you for the grace to receive, to accept renewing energy and comfort and the grace to give comfort to those around us. All they need is a gentle touch sometimes and it will help them to rise up and keep going. So may we know how to be gentle with people, even prickly people. May we know that they are priceless as well. So we call in all of the people in our lives, but we won't stop there. We will call in all of the people in the world because they are in our lives too. We call in all the people right now, and we, we speak words of comfort over them. To people who are living on the streets, in cities that are unfriendly towards the unhoused, we call them in. To people who are being stopped at a border today, being told that they can't come in, we speak words of comfort to them, to their families. We speak words of comfort to those who are causing discomfort, to the violent ones, desperate to use force to establish their identities and their place in the world, but we speak comfort to them because their minds are terrorized. They don't know why they're here. May we all, by the grace of your living presence, recognize that we're all here to make this planet home, to make this place home, to make our cities home, to make our homes home for somebody. Amen.